All right, here I am again, uh, Robert C. Dupree, and I wanted to just bring again to the American people's attention. Now, I had mentioned earlier about the conversation between me and my congressman, Emmanuel Cleaver, you know, regarding the uh, deprivation of civil and constitutional rights and so forth. And that was on a Monday, you know, April the 17th of 2017. Now, it, it, it's real ironic that immediately after I brought all this to his attention and he was fully aware that he's been recorded and so forth and even he admitted you know that uh, the FBI they are the ones who investigate the courts you know and if they find any wrongdoings he also admitted congressman that is that uh, you know Congress can impeach the judge I want to bring one thing out First of all, you know, I'm not trying to get anyone fired. I'm not trying to mess up anyone's reputation. I'm not trying to even try to discredit anyone about anything other than the wrong that had been done and depriving me of my civil and constitutional right, which is a major reflection of basically all of us, meaning that if this type of injustice and this cause of injustice, I'm talking about how General Mills and, and certain, certain lawyers and judges had aided in the conspiracy to deprive me of my civil rights and right to a jury trial and, and many other rights and things that have been deprived. Well then how many more other people may have been going through this and still going through it because of the Jim Crow conspiracy. Yes, it, it, it's an ugly picture and, and they just have to call it like it is. Back on what I was saying concerning my congressman Emmanuel Cleaver that immediately after him and I had this type of conversation here which again I state was on Monday, April the 17th of 2017, I immediately got a notice from the courts on Tuesday, April the 18th, 2017. A day immediately right after him and I had this conversation here. And it, uh, I want to uh, make sure I look very closely here and read this here, what was stated here concerning what the courts had done in regarding to my case here. Uh, the district court clerk has transmitted a notice of appeal in this matter and we have docketed it under the capturing and case number shown above and that de uh, capturing case number it was uh, regarding 17-1817 uh, now this is the court of appeal now keep in mind I have been repeatedly uh, requesting about my case being reopened now they had closed my case Yes, they had closed it the last year back in 2016 and never reopened it. But now, after I have this conversation here and bringing this here out to Emmanuel Cleaver's and them attention, well, now all of a sudden they want to take this here case and just reappeal it and take and move it and put it into another location. And the reason why that is because they know it has so much evidence and so many complaints filed against this judge, Gary A. Fenner down here in the United States District Court for the Western District of Missouri, you know, they, 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 they just don't want me to be around down in that area, which is the court of original jurisdiction. So they come up with this here and put me in another jurisdiction. I am the one that should be filing, if anything, if, if, if any matter of that na this nature, I should be the one to be appealing and filing, but yet they court, and when, when they I'm referring to is the court down here, the district court, this judge, Gary A. Fiener and them, they used the, the uh, clerk down here in the uh, district court to cahoops along with the uh, clerk and whoever up here in the court of appeal to just move my case up there and then stated that if I don't threat, uh, if, if I don't pay a $505 filing fee, well, they're going to close this case. And that's exactly what they did. Because, uh, Hey, I didn't appeal this case. They appealed it. And the reason why they appealed it, like I stated earlier, to get me away from this Judge Gary Finner down here in the district court and, and the, to bring all of the evidence before juror. I brought all this to Congressman Emanuel Cleaver's attention. And keep in mind, he is my fifth district representative, my congressman. He alleged that he's not able to do anything because of the three separations of power as I stated previously however if that is true I had even filled out a wave before I'm here if you can see with his name up on here stating and I'm going to read this here 
And this here was also given to me from his Kansas City local office representative down here because I'm perpetually in, and continuously being in and out of his office here in the Kansas City area where I reside at here as well to inform and keep me, Manuel Cleaver, in his office informed concerning the how I have been treated behind the walls of the courts and the deprivation of civil and constitutional rights, which is still going on currently. So since Emmanuel Cleaver alleged that he's not able to represent me or able to do anything in this matter here or whatever. I have a form here and this is uh, one of the forms. It's called the uh, the Privacy Act of uh, was that 1974. And I got down up over here uh, where it states. I'm going to read this here briefly here. Since Congress in the United States of Federal Claims has created a procedure that permits any person to file a complaint in the court about the behavior of a federal judge, I, Robert C. Dupree, is respectfully requesting for assistance and give full permission to Congressman Cleaver to, or his office, the permission to forward this information. And then I also have the other information thing that was attested here and any other, uh, uh, information that they had and I have given them many documents and things of, of uh, information effects concerning uh, a lot of the conspiracy and stuff that has still been going on and how they're protecting this judge and refusing to re have him recruit off the case and and the big issue also is because of what he had done and the filing of my complaints against him in previous lawsuit back here in 2010 when he resided over uh, General Mills and the union the lawyers and all these other folks around up over here my, excuse me, my former attorney, and, and, and how he dismissed my case and lied and refused to send all documents up to the higher up court. This is one of the reasons why I don't want this judge on this new lawsuit that still involves the old entities in General Mills. When I had a, had a uh, website put out against General Mills because of the conspiracy and the wrongdoing that they had, even dating all the way back the September 25th, 2001, involving the settlement of full release fraud and deceit. A lot of this is still stemming off in here. Since I didn't get my rights upheld in the courts, well, then I want the truth to be known. And General Mills has a lot of pull in these courts and things around out here, and especially from my own personal experience. And this is why I come, I want to make sure that the American people be aware of it. And I also wanted to make sure my congressman, Emmanuel Cleaver, be aware of it. Everybody that. that, that there's a lot of folks out there that's aware of it. Even the FBI is aware of it. The NAACP is aware of it. The, the, the United States Supreme Court is aware of it. Everybody that's out here in the judicial system around here is aware of this here. I often ask the question, how would this picture have been painted had I been a white Robert C. Dupree plaintiff pro se complaining against a black judge, Gary A. Fenner? Now I'm just hey just just keep it 100. I, I what how would this picture be painted? Hmm. Well, I'm pretty sure uh, a painting from uh, a picture from from 99 to 100 percent. I would no doubt will probably have attorneys both in and out of state lined up ready to represent me had I been a white man complaining against a black judge. But since it's the other way around, that nobody see apparently seen that no one wants to touch this. And I know this is just a raw, ugly truth, but then on the most part, you know this is true. It's just keeping it real, keeping it 100. And since Congressman Emmanuel Cleaver and them are that he's not able to do anything around the well then if he's not able to do anything about this here, well then send this information to someone who can in the Congressional Committee Board, whoever they are, that made a law that anyone can file against a federal judge. Well then, I gave him, that. that is what this here waiver is about. You know, giving him permission to send this information up to those who can. And at this point, that logical action has not been taken. So, however, I still want to continue to bring this here truth out in the ugly, ungodly act of conspiracy against civil and constitutional rights. And... The courts is perpetually, and when I say the courts, I'm talking about the Court of Appeal, they are perpetually closing and denying any documents of mine that I file and send up to them and opposing against what they have done in, revol in, in, in regarding the uh, 
actions they have taken in closing my case. This kid, they never should have appealed this case. I'm the one that should appeal it. But they appealed it, and the reason why they did is to get me away from this judge down here, Gary A. Fiener, because all my complaints and stuff in the majority is against him down up over here, and what he had done prior and previous, and what he is doing right now currently. And this is a lot of the conspiracy behind that. But everybody appears to seem like, oh, well, this is not really happening, or pretend like, well, it's just something that, no, well, it's a computer error or something. So nevertheless, I just want this here to be known. And as my congressman, Emmanuel Cleaver, representative, well, then, like I said, if you are not able to do anything as you allege, well, then forward this information that you have been given, perpetually has been given, or to his office has been given to you, then pass it over to those who can. So this is what I'm saying. Something can be done about it.